Welcome to this introduction to policing vlog. This vlog will look at how the media shapes both public perceptions and the expectations of the police. The vlog will also outline how the media can be a valuable tool for the police in controlling and solving crime when used effectively. It is crucial to understand the role of both the police and the media in today's society. Following this, the vlog will assess how the police are portrayed in fiction media and how this can affect both perceptions and the expectations of the police. With social media forever growing in today's society, it is crucial to understand how this can also affect both police perceptions and expectations. Finally, the vlog will look to outline the benefits of social media to the police when used as a tool. First, it's crucial to understand the roles of both the police and the media in today's society as separate identities. The role of the police is to uphold the law fairly and firmly. They prevent crime and bring justice to those who break the law. The police help and reassure the community. However, this has to be done with integrity, common sense and sound judgement. The media is the way in which a large number of people receive information and entertainment. This can be through television, radio, newspaper and the internet. Now we understand what both of their roles are within society, we can explore the relationship the two have. The media is now one of the most important factors in creating police perceptions within our society. Raina speaks about a study that took place in London that looked at how people get their information about the police. 80% said that the news was their principal source of information regarding the police while 29% stated that the media was their main source of gathering information regarding the police. This helps highlight the importance the media has in informing the public and is a major factor in creating public perceptions. This vlog will start by looking at fiction media. Do you know who this is? There have been a number of changes over time in how police are presented on TV. In the 1960s, Dixon of Doc Green was one of the main representations of the police on UK television. The show aired for a total of 21 years between 1955 and 1976 and consisted of a total of 432 episodes. The show was about Constable George Dixon and his colleagues at Doc Green Police Station in London and showed petty crimes and how these were successfully dealt with through common sense and human understanding. Dixon of Doc Green showed a very realistic idea of policing to the UK public. However, it is crucial to understand that the show was aired during a zenith of public popularity. The show also coincided with the optimism following World War II. And during this time, the police were seen as guardians rather than oppressors. Do you think a show like this would be good today? Dixon of Doc Green is very different to the shows we're used to today. There has been a massive shift over time. And in the 1970s, the arrival of the macho cop changed police on TV forever. This is where the cop would bend the rules to achieve their desired goal, as long as the criminal was caught. Over time, a less realistic view of the police is much more present in the media. Crime and police dramas are some of the most watched TV shows in the UK. As you can see, we've highlighted Line of Duty. This is because the final episode of the police corruption drama became the most watched drama of the 21st century, hitting a peak viewing of 15.7 million people across the UK. Police aren't just seen on TVs in our houses, they're also seen on the biggest screen possible, in Hollywood, with shows such as Die Hard, Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Bad Boys. The way police are portrayed in Hollywood has also seen drastic changes over time. Between 1946 and 1965, the message of crime doesn't pay was mostly seen throughout Hollywood. However, there were major changes in the 1990s and this is a change we associate most with police on the big screen today. This is where the enforcers are similar to criminals and do not follow the rule book and this is acceptable as long as the criminal is caught. This is on both big screens and our TVs with films like Die Hard and TV shows such as Luther. However, due to the rise of mobile phones and social media, we do not rely on televisions or cinemas to see police on screens. They can be in our pockets across social media. Twitter has a, is a huge platform with 19 million users in the UK alone. That is nearly a third of the UK population. I'm sure everybody has heard of the George Floyd case back in 2020. Following the tragic death of George Floyd, hashtag Black Lives Matter was tweeted 2,018,000 times the day after his death. Following this, 
it became trending and his hashtag had been used 8.8 .8 million times. This just highlights how quickly messages can spread across social media. This happened after a member of the public filmed police misconduct on their mobile phone and uploaded it to social media, showing just how dangerous phones can be to police perceptions. After looking at how perceptions and expectations of the police are affected by social media and fiction media, it is crucial to look at how the police use media to their own advantage. Crime Watch was a very successful tool for police over the years. The show was aired on a monthly basis between 1994 and 2017. The show would present a reconstruction of crime that had occurred. It was a tool that was used to appeal to the public for information about suspects and criminals. Crime Watch helped solve many famous cases across its time, and most famously the case of James Bulger in 1993. The show showed CCTV footage of the young boy being lured away from his parents, and the killers were later identified through this footage and through Crime Watch, showing how important this tool was to police. Over the years, Crime Watch proved to be one of the most effective public relations exercises at the police's disposal. The alliance between the media acted as a safe haven, and it was unlike any other form of media, as they were not critiqued or challenged. Between 1984 and 2000, there were 582 arrests made as a direct result from the show. However, the show stopped airing in 2017 after views drastically started to fall, even hitting an all-time low of 1 million viewers. Although Crime Watch stopped airing in 2017, this does not mean the police have stopped communicating with the public. The rise of social media has helped police engagement increase. Social media is a form of internet communication. It offers police a way of connecting and engaging with the public. It also allows them to distribute important information quickly. Social media allows the public to raise concerns with the police while remaining anonymous, which is a key feature to why social media is so successful when it comes to communication with the police. A study in 2012 backs this up as it found 69% of respondents interact with the police more if they could stay anonymous. The police use social media today by providing key information making sure engagement is high and asking for intelligence on current investigations. The tweet to our right shows how police use social media today. With the World Cup around the corner, domestic abuse is expected to rise and this informs the public of what the signs of domestic abuse are and how to deal with them if they find themselves in trouble. Benefit for the police using social media in today's society. Social media allows police a new method of sharing important information with the public without using traditional methods such as the news, which in the past have been so heavily relied upon. It allows police to publish information in real time, which is never possible before. A good example of police using social media in real time was the summer riots of 2011, when social media was used to calm the public and refute ill-founded rumours of disorderly incidents. Social media allows the police to demonstrate accountability and transparency. Studies have shown that there is an overwhelming support for police use of social media as many follow their local services. However, there are limitations to the police use of social media, although if these are understood, they can be managed. The police believe there are five main risks when it comes to the use of the internet and social media. Section 7 in this report looks at how police will deal with risk-free, bringing this credit to the police. One example of this is that the expression or views of any conduct which appears to support discrimination against any group or includes racial, religious or homophobic hatred will not be tolerated. This highlights that police understand the risks social media can bring to their reputation and how they look to deal with them. Police now employ media officers whose job it is to deal with all social media inquiries. To conclude, the media does have the power to correct negative expectations and perceptions of the police with fiction media showing unrealistic expectations, as criminals are always caught and sentenced, whereas social media shows negative perceptions, as police misconduct covers social media. However, the police can use the media to their advantage, with shows such as Crime Watch showing just how important it is for police to have positive relationships with the media. The police have now successfully made the move to social media and use this to update the public with key information as well as asking for information they desire. Although there are obvious limitations to the police use of social media, if these are understood and managed, the police can continue to use the media effectively to improve policing across the UK. Thank you for listening.